How are you doing? I just I just want to tell you, Mr. Lang, I'm such a huge fan of yours. I'm a really big fan of the show that you did, Crime Story. I watch it all the time. Dave Abrams. I'm sorry, Chris. It's great to hear that. <laughs> it was a good old show, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, man. You're the man. Watch it all the time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I wanted to ask you, one of the things that I really thought was kind of interesting about uh, Don't Breathe 2 is that in, in this one, there's way more sympathy for, for Norman as compared to the last movie. And you're kind of on his side throughout, which maybe you weren't as much in the last movie, at least I was. And I was just wondering, uh, for you, what was it like to kind of bring that layer of sympathy to a character that was kind of in some ways like the boogeyman in the first film? Well, I, you know, I wasn't in any way attempting to court anyone's sympathy or even to uh, court their empathy. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just trying to accomplish the task um, or, 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 or the character is trying to accomplish the task at hand. He's moved beyond, in the first one, what you can appreciate about the character is that he's doing what he needs to do to survive. And, you know, you can't blame any creature for attempting to survive, right? I think. Uh, it's not a moral issue. It's just, it's an organic issue. You fight for survival, but it's changed. His, in, in the second, he's actually got something to survive for. He's actually got a purpose and and um, and a legitimate sort of reason to, to 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 be alive. You know, he's more than just taking up space right now. He actually has a responsibility. To, and, and, you know, we can debate, you can talk about whatever kind of moral ambiguities you want with it. The fact of the matter is he has made himself or some kind of divine cosmic power has made him responsible for this human life. And, and so that's, I think that, that that just necessarily changes how the viewer kind of feels. Well, I mean, I was on his side throughout, to be honest, Like, I mean, but I was even kind of in the first one, but much more so in this one. But what I also really thought was 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 amazing was you have this really kind of tight choreography in the movie of the fight scenes. And I was wondering how challenging was that to kind of have to participate in these kind of extended action scenes that I thought were really impressive, especially compared to the first one. But the whole time you, you have to be blind. You can't actually see the guys that you're fighting. And I was just wondering, that always fascinates me when I see people doing that. And I was wondering how you would even go about that in the first place. Well, we, we, we went about it quite carefully. We went about it, you know, it's, it's, it's not unlike, uh, I would think, um, rehearsing, uh, you know, dance routines, mm -hmm. you know, in, in singing in the rain or something like that. You want to get them right. You know, you don't want missteps. You don't want injuries. You want and you want a certain um, you want a certain poetry. Yeah. You know, to the to to the violence you want. So so if you really parse it out, if you really look at it, I, I would submit that there is a certain stylization. To the, you know, so amidst and each of the fights, by the way, in, in Don't Breathe 2 has its own personality, oh. I think. And oh. I love, I just like that so much. I like it in the writing. I like it in the directing. I, and I like it in the, 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 stunt choreo the, stunt, the stunt coordination that happened in there. Um, uh, so they, you know, because it really goes from um, kind of improvisational jazz which that basement fight with Rocky, which is just a balls on <laughs> beating the shit out of each other, uh, to the water, you know, to the kind of Esther Williams moment, you know what I mean? When I'm in doing water ballet, you know, at the bottom in, with my fingertips and everything like that. So yeah, it's, uh, it, was, it was done thoughtfully and, and carefully. And then when they say action, all hell breaks loose anyway. <laughs> A lot of style, too. I thought it was great. Well, thank you very much for your time. And um, uh, you make me want to hit the gym with those T-shirts again. So <laughs> I, it's good to talk to you, Chris. Take care, man. Thank you very much. Bye. Failed. You're gonna 
is in my hand. Sorry. I'll make it next time. You almost got me, didn't you, boy? We had a lot of fun today. I could take her again next week. No. Home is safe. Shadow! Coming with us, kid. Get the girl! It's not me you need to be scared of, little girl. But the man standing next to you. Now, I don't know who he is, but I know who he's not. Should I tell her or you? Me. Now, you are gonna see what I see. So yeah, I really I, I love the movie and I loved it compared to the first one. But I, I guess what I what I first wanted to get into, um, it feels in some ways that you guys kind of swapped the genre a little bit, right? Like the first one was really kind of a thriller and a horror movie, but this one almost felt like an action movie at times. And yeah. I was and I was wondering if that was a kind of a, a conscious thing that you guys want to do, because it would have been really easy to repeat yourselves, but you went in kind of a totally different direction with this one, as far as this, I is, this is exactly what it is. You know, we we uh, we like to take the, the the more challenging path, right? Because it's also a lot more fun for us, right? Like that movie, the first movie is done. It exists. You can go and watch it again and, and, and that's it, right? We wanted to explore something new to build on top of the first movie and take it to a different place. And I, I think the movie is a genre mix and it, it lands somewhere within the, you know, the horror action thriller, right? Um, so... We decided to go that way because it's it was a lot more exciting for us, you know. It, it, and it came out naturally, I think, organically out of the story we wanted to tell. You know, the first movie was about this villain that got away with all these crimes, was allowed to get away with all these crimes. And then so we, we knew the second part it was going to be about is it justice going to be served? Is he going to ever going to pay for what he's done? Is he ever going to see the truth about himself? Is he, is this, is he ever going to stop, stop being morally blind? um and uh that's what we're interested in. but yeah it definitely has more action we we're joking the other day it's like commando meets uh don't breathe <laughs> I, I was i was thinking about commando when i was watching yeah, of course. Little bit. but you know it doesn't you know, say at the end like watch some steam. <laughs> <laughs> it, and it's something that that just happens naturally organically when you were saying because of the premise of the story we knew that we wanted to attack this guy harder and punish him harder right and that already evokes uh, more action you know what i mean so you go like, okay, then there's gonna be more action and more fights in this in this in this in this movie. We're gonna put a lot more pressure into this character. So it, all these things just happen naturally out of out of where the story's taking you. But also, you see Stephen Lang standing there, shirtless. <laughs> <laughs> you want him to engage in action. I mean, the first movie we had a we we have a lot of action, but there was a there was a nice fight in one room and. It just it just it just begs for it. So so we want to craft a story where the audience was going to get that aspect of himself of this character as well. 
Well, I've, I've never seen a movie like this where kind of the main villain from the first one kind of has a moment of kind of an epiphany, right? And a self-awareness in it that I've, I've never seen that in a, in a alert. Horror movie before. <laughs> I thought that was great. Yeah, um, thank you, man. Okay, I have to ask you guys, because I'm running out of time. How is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre reboot coming along? Because I see that you guys are involved in that. And I'm just wondering. It's great. How it's- it, 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 look, it's great. We, we, we've shown it to an audience already. Uh, just, you know, all we know at this point when we test these movies is how they score with the test. And, and it scores great as, as the original Don't Breed or, the, or this one. So we, we, we know we, there's an audience that has so much fun with it. And um, we we just can't wait for you to see it. It's, it. We put a lot of love in it and the story. Uh, David Blue Garcia did a great job as director. But uh, for us, it was going kind of going back in time uh, when we sat down with Evil Dead and had to figure out how to bring it to a new audience. And uh, and we did that exercise again. We really put a lot of work and and the story and the character honoring the legacy of the original, but also making sure we can bring it to a new audience that, you know, if you're a teenager, you were a kid last time there was a th- Texas change in <laughs> theaters. So, you know, for us, it, the, the time doesn't go by like that, but for, for young people, it does. So we just want to make sure that they can uh, enter this franchise, but also that they were, the fans of the original will get everything they want. Well, I hope it's as good as this one. This was, this was pretty kick-ass. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. <laughs> in my hand. Sorry, I'll make it next time. You almost got me, didn't you, boy? We had a lot of fun today. I could take her again next week. No, home is safe. Shadow! Coming with us, kid. Get the girl! It's not me you need to be scared of, little girl. But the man standing next to you. Now, I don't know who he is, but I know who he's not. Should I tell her or you? He's gonna come for me.